Welcome to Living Life. I'm so glad that you're able to join us today. I don't know about you, but I, uh, you know, I like to be in control. I don't know if this is because I was born in Germany or if this is just part of my personality or if this is something that you know happens if you are too long in ministry, uh, but I like to be in control. And one of the things that I struggle with is when I realize that I'm not in control because none of us truly is. This becomes clear the more time you live or the older you get. Uh, once you get married, uh, you understand you're not in control. Once you have children, you fully realize you're not in control. But how do we deal with not being in control and how do we still remain at peace, be happy, are able to live without completely stressing out? I think this is something that we will discover as we turn to today's scripture. Let's read God's word together. Mark chapter 14, verses 12 through 21. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room? where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table, eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Today's devotion bears the title, The Lord is in Control. And as we read through it, we discover that he indeed is. Jesus being busy doing ministry almost so busy that, you know, they weren't able to make preparations for one of the most important um, seasons of the Jewish calendar, which is, um, you know, Passover. Uh, verse 12 introduces us and tells us that on the first day of the festival of the unleavened bread, uh, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciple asked him, where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat Passover? And then the immediate uh, impression could be, oh no, like Jesus didn't know. Jesus didn't have the foresight to prepare for this. And even the disciples were so occupied with being busy and doing ministry and doing all of the things that Jesus asked them to do that they were unprepared. But Jesus is prepared. Jesus is in control. So he sent two of his disciples telling them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. So Jesus is telling them, you know, as two of you guys go out there, someone is already on their way to meet you. Uh, Jesus had already everything planned out. In verse 14, it says, say to the owner of the house he enters, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Now, I don't know if you caught it the first time when you read through this. I thought it was very interesting because Jesus is not saying, where is your guest room? 
a guest room that I can borrow or use really quickly because, you know, me and my disciples, we need to, you know, prepare for Passover. No, in verse 14, Jesus says, where is my guest room? Even though this house belongs to someone else, Jesus um, knows that this also belongs to him and he has the spiritual authority to claim it for him. Whatever we possess, whatever we think is ours, it's not truly ours. We are called to be good stewards for that. Whatever we have. When Jesus says, I want to use this, this is mine, we need to be able to say, yes, Lord, indeed, this is yours. Use it for your glory. But very often, I think, we hold on to these things and we say, this is mine. This is my house. This is my car. This is my money. But we need to remember that we have received all of these blessings, not for our own good, but we've received it so that we can use it for God, His kingdom, and for His purpose. In verse 15 now, he says, He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The owner of the house didn't just leave them with an empty room, something that is half-heartedly ready. But the Bible tells us it is a large room. It is completely furnished and it is ready. Sometimes when we sit here in our lives and we don't know how to handle unforeseen circumstances, when we realize as we look into our bank account and we see we don't know how to take care of all of the bills, when we have important news break to us that we weren't prepared for and we sit there for a moment and we wonder, God, why is this happening to me? Why are you not taking care of me? We can trust. We can trust that God already knew about these things that would happen to us. We can trust that in the midst of all of this, God will handle it and that He is still in control. Even though the world seems to spin out of control, God is there. And He holds us, He holds our world, and He continues to provide for us. And even in the moments when we realize that what we thought we needed is not provided, we come to realization that when we are remaining in God, when we let Him be in control, we find content, we find peace, and we still feel our hearts and all of our needs being taken care of as long as we are in Him. So let not anxiety, fear, or worry drive you today. Keep your eyes fixed on God who is in control. Fixing your eyes on a Father who loves you, who wants to bless you in overabundance, and a Father who is powerful, who has brought you so far, who has secured you through all of your struggles until today, and He has promised to continue to be with you. He has not brought you this far to leave you now. Keeping that in mind, let's prepare our hearts for prayer. One of the most challenging aspects of Christian life is to let go of control and to trust that God will take care of us. To trust that He's in control and in His wisdom and in His foresight, He knows better than us. One of the ways that we can let go is through prayer, to surrender to Him, to not just open up our hands and to say, this is yours, but also to open up our hearts and to let Him take over. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, You are in control. You are in control over our lives. You are in control of everything even the portions and aspects of our life that we are completely unaware of. You know us. You created us. And the Bible tells us that you know about everything that is yet to come. Every day of our life, you already know. And so we surrender to you. We declare, God, you are Lord. This life is yours. All of my worries are yours. All of my possessions are yours. Truly, I am your child, 
and everything that I can do for you, I want to do. And as we let go, we receive. We don't just receive more physical blessings. What we receive is a reminder of your goodness. What we receive is peace that this world could never offer us. We find peace in you that we will never find even in a full bank account. We find true peace, something that true health would never give us. But we also receive love. You are unconditional and perfect love. We receive more and more of that together with your mercy as well as your grace as you surrender more. So God, as we give you everything, our fear, our anxiety, our worries, but also our personal human ambitions. God, with an open heart and with an open mind, we stand before you. We're excited because we know that you will fill our cup and our cup will overflow. So thank you, God. We praise your name. We love you. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and all God's people said, Amen.